We got some, uh, how you doing? First of all, just got home from a, a long day, uh, day three of a really fun project I was working on at the studio called Sound Emporium in uh, downtown Nashville, Tennessee. You guys know uh, Sarah Jarrows, amazing um, singer, mandolin player, uh, been working on her record for the last three days with a producer named Daniel Tashin, who's a Dear old friend, and watches the homeschooling show. Hey, Daniel. Uh, man, just three amazing days of, of uh, awesome singing and great songs. and Just had a ball. Uh, so much fun. Um, you know, it's a pretty cool job when you get home from from work and you, and you want to still want to play guitar, right? But yeah, let's see, I got some stuff in the VCB I wanted to uh, look into here. Um, I want to thank you guys for all the sweet words and kind comments lately and all the stuff I put up. You know, you guys have been very sweet to me. These are my reader glasses that they are, you know, cheapo Walgreens readers. Uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to look at here on the old VCB. VCB stands for Viewer Comment Bin for anyone that's new to the channel. Thanks for all the kind words about about my son Marshall playing. You know, I don't I don't like to show his face on the videos. You guys can understand that. You people with kids, uh, you know, whoring your kids out on social media is not a good idea. Not a good idea. So, uh, looking forward to the show. You know, coming up, the big concert. Um, things been sold out for a while, and I think you guys got the streaming link. So if you want to stream the show, you can you can see it. Um, one guy, one guy said, "Uncle Larry, um, I feel like these recordings with the full band are clinics in rhythm playing, especially the past one with the dancers. Man, I miss the dancers. I don't know what happened to them. Uh, we'd love for you to." kind of break down what you're doing. It's not just strumming, but it is very fixed to fit in with the context of the band, song, and chords. Whenever I hear full bands with so many players and lanes, each, wait, whenever I hear full bands with so many players and lanes, each is just adding something small, but it sounds amazing. Yes, that is the whole point of all this shit. Okay, the song is, in my mind, it's just, it's like a big wheel going around. And each person's part has to be a perfectly fit cog in that wheel, right? Interlocked. Like, I've been listening to tons of Beatles lately. And, uh, like, for example, I mean, one must look no further than to look at the White Album for unbelievable wisdom. Uh, in record making and in arrangement and parts. I mean, if you list, listen to Martha My Dear, like listen to the horns and the string arrangement on Martha My Dear. I mean, human beings thought of that. Human beings executed that. Sometimes when I hear stuff that's that otherworldly good, I, I, I have a hard time thinking that human beings created it. Um, that shit just doesn't happen, you know. It's, geniuses have to think of those things. That doesn't happen on its own. Um, I wonder what the Beatles' collective IQ was. I'd love to know that. Um, so, like, what happens is, you know, in the general sense is that a song starts happening. You know, you got a beat that a drummer may be playing, and then a and then a and then a bass player or synth bass or something comes in playing something that's supposed to lock with that, right? And it doesn't have to be exactly what the drums are doing. You see, this this is this is the type of thing, like like if you got the drums doing yin, you gotta have the bass doing the yang. It's like 
it was it was, it was old school mentality where the where the the drummer if the drummer was going do, 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 that the bass would be boom 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 playing exactly what the bass drum plays. I mean that's if I ever hear a bass player doing that, I want to go choke him out. That worked for a little while in music, uh, but what's really cool is when it doesn't match, but it locks it with it in a in a way that that if you took one part out, it's it ruins everything. And then what you'd like to do is find a, a guitar part that 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 does something else that becomes the third cog in that wheel, and then like. If you you know it when you find the right part, you know that matches with with what everybody else is doing, and the, you're playing in a rhythm that uh, that matches what else is happening around you, and um, you know, uh, I mean, you listen to an old James Brown records, you know, I mean, the way the bass and the drums and the guitar play against each other, you know, it's just. It's, it's all you need to know about about how how a rhythm part is supposed to feel, you know, in a song. You know, of course it's not just strumming, you know. You know, can you imagine, you know, I feel good. I know that I would. If somebody doing that, it'd be horrible, you know. Um, you know, somebody came up with the idea to go, I feel good. That's cool. You know, um, You know, and this doesn't just, I'm not just talking about R&B music, I'm talking about all music, any music, you know. All the parts need to marry together, you know. And so that's what rhythm playing is, is all about. Rhythm playing is about listening to the bass and drums and keyboards and finding something in the right range, first of all. And is it low, is it mid, is it high? And then also with the right rhythm to juxtapose against what everybody else is playing so that um, it doesn't sound jumbled, right? So like on, on you know, like John Fogarty was on the gig, you know? Uh, so he plays all the, the main bits, you know? So, you know, on Suzy Q, he, he comes in with a one. Let's see. I'm, I'm tuned down. He comes in with this sort of... Uh, If you're gonna play rhythm while he's doing that, what would you do? Would you just be? No, you gotta to listen to what he's playing. You know, that's a nice choice playing the two and four back beats on a dominant seven chord, you know, kind of old school, you know, matching the snare drum. I remember back when I played with John Fogarty back in 2000 when he opened up for Tina Turner touring all around Europe, Germany. I pretty much played that all night long. You know, I just... Really, all you need to do on that gig is he plays all the leads and, and the main bits. Speaking of which, God, was it cool to see him again? Um, he was such such a. It was so cool. He was in such a great place, you know. Uh, really fun to like. He was, you know. At one point, you know, on this Jim Mercy gig, you know, I, I said to him, you know, right when he walked up on stage to do a sound check, I said, John, you know, uh, I realize we have way too many guitar players up here, you know. Please just. I know you're only used to playing with one other guy. Please just tell us who you want to leave the stage, you know, because it's no problem, you know. We don't want to have a sea of necks, as Waddy Wachtel used to call it. Too many guitar players on the stage. Um, and he goes, he, he thought about it for a second. He goes, you know, I'd, I'd like to just have the memory of playing with all you guys, you know. I thought that was so cool that he said that. And uh, so, you know, we all just play very restrained parts, you know, and let him do all the lead bits. And it, it worked, you know. Um, I mean, pro musicians know how to play invisibly, you know. 
get out of the way, don't take up too much space. That's really the key when you're playing a rhythm part. You just want to add little jabs here and there, but don't take up a ton of space, you know. Let shit, you know, breathe around you. Like if a clav player is going like... That's a good choice for a rhythm part. So, you know, Fogarty was great. It was really cool to see him, man. And then, you know, couldn't have been cooler, as opposed to some other people that were on the gig. <laughs> Who were a little more crabby. Um, so, uh, you know, age gracefully, people. That's my advice to all of you. Age gracefully. Um, I can feel a massive guitar purge coming on. I've got way too many guitars. And uh, I, I was thinking, you know, today, I was thinking the last couple of days, man, I need to sell a bunch of stuff. I've got, I've got to get rid of at least 10, 12 guitars. Uh, so... Anybody that's looking for some guitars, let me know. I'm, I, I might have a few for sale. Like this. And some other nice stuff. Uh, I just, I'm at this point where I'd rather have less stuff. And focus on, a, a, on uh, making music instead of having a million guitars to set up all the time.
old rhythm, rhythm and blues. Uh, what else can we talk about? Oh, you know what? I wanted to say thank you to a guy named Vic Dupre. He put my beloved 58 Flame Top in the new Burst Believers book, volume six. Very cool. Um, let me show you the pages. I was very honored to be in this book. And he sent a sweet note with it. He's a very nice fellow. He said, you rock. Thank you, Vic. Hope you like the book. I think your pages look great. It's an honor having you included. Look, look how nice his handwriting is. That's Vic Dupre. One of the original burst collectors. Uh, this book smells good. You should definitely get this. Um, he sent me a nice copy in the mail. There's Kenny Wayne. Like there's a sweet Kenny Wayne. And then I think Larry's, Larry's in here. Rick Nielsen from the Cheap Tricks. Here's a, here's Larry's pages. Look at that. With the photos by sweet Eleanor Jane from England. Nice burst there, yeah? And then there's another page with, with some photos of Larry. See? Photos of Larry. And a few quotes. Really cool. Very, really an honor to be in this. Appreciate it. You know, I never thought I'd belong to that club. <laughs> Remember this song? Let's see. How sick is that when Lennon comes in with that nasty? I think that's Carlos Allenbar going. already 20 minutes how the hell did that time go so fast i haven't even talked about anything um all right friends have a blast i hope you learned something from this 20 minutes rambling happy holidays friends i hope you're uh, not too stressed out in shopping malls across america Class dismissed, Uncle Larry over and out.